Atkins' physical absence from today's work session. She previously notified the board members of her request to participate electronically from a remote location due to a personal matter. Our school board policy, P2-04-006, electronic participation in meetings from remote location, requires a majority vote of board members present at a primary or central meeting location to allow a board member to participate in a meeting from a remote location. Per the school board policy, do I hear a motion? I move the school board approve Ms. Atkins' participation for remote location. Moved by Ms. Kinsella, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Reverend Cooper. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? The ayes have it. Ms. Atkins' request has been approved. This meeting is also being live streamed on the HCPS website. We'll begin our meeting with a roll call vote. When I call your name, please verbally indicate your presence, Reverend Cooper. Present. Ms. Kinsella. Present. Ms. Ogburn. Present. Ms. Atkins. Present. Thank you. Let the record reflect that the quorum of the board is physically present and Ms. Atkins is participating electronically. I asked Ms. Atkins to verbally note if she needs to leave the meeting and sub subsequently verbally note when she returns. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I move that the school board approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Moved by Ms. Ogburn, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Reverend Cooper. Roll call vote, Reverend Cooper. Aye. Ms. Ogburn? Aye. Ms. Atkins? Aye. And Ms. Kinsella? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it, the agenda is approved. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Good evening and welcome to our guests and visitors. We will begin our meeting this evening as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance, which is going to be followed by a moment of silence. So when we stand for the pledge, if you'd remain standing for the moment of silence, um, that would be wonderful. We are going to have Pam Jones, the principal of Rivers Edge Elementary School, come up to the podium and introduce the students who will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you and good evening. The fifth graders from River's Edge that will be leading the Pledge of Allegiance this evening are Sahana, Maida, Aprimea, and Miranda. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll now pause for a moment of silence, which can be used by those in attendance for a moment of prayer, reflection, or meditation. And that concludes our moment of silence. Thank you again to the students who led us in the pledge. Can we have a big round of applause for them? And uh, we're going to pause for just a moment as the board members and I get seated in the audience for the next item, which is our performance highlight. And Mr. Mosley will uh, kick them off in just a moment. All right, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Cashwell, colleagues and guests. My name is Christopher Mosley. I am the Education Specialist for Performing Arts. It is my pleasure to introduce for our performance highlight, Ms. Myers' class from Rivers Edge Elementary School under the direction of Mrs. Melinda Eidelstein. Ms. Eidelstein is in her 30th year of teaching and her 20th year, that's right, 20th year at River's Edge. Um, she's taught all 30 years in Henrico County. Isn't that amazing? This will actually be her last year teaching. Yeah, so she will be retiring this year. Uh, the students will be performing the following selections. The Wacky March featuring the Boomwhackers, Triangles, and Kazoos, and Child of Peace. 
Tonight we have in attendance their proud principal, who you just saw a second ago, and their teacher, Mrs. Myers. Can you all just stand so we can recognize you real quick? All right, thank you. And now please help me welcome to the stage the wonderful students from River's Edge Elementary School.
how cute is that? <laughs> Thank you again to our River's Edge students for that outstanding performance. That was my first time hearing boom whackers in action, and I had no idea how great they could sound. Well done, thank you. Uh, next, we're gonna be moving on to our recognition item, and we are proud to be able to recognize recipients of our 2022 REB Awards for Teaching Excellence, um, and Dr. Hughes is going to share uh, that recognition item. Oh, thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school board, Dr. Cashwell, and guests. I'm honored this evening to recognize two Henrico teachers who were recently recognized as REB award winners for teaching excellence. The REB awards for teaching excellence was, were established in 1988 to recognize public school teachers who have distinguished, distinguished themselves by their inspiring classroom performance. The program was developed by the Community Foundation and is funded by the REB Foundation. In November's, teachers Jackie Dundero and Catherine Pike were recognized from Henrico County. Jackie Dundero, a history and social studies teacher from Deep Run High School, was awarded $8,500 to retrace their family's escape from Nazi Germany by traveling to sites in Europe. Jackie will explore the pace of, place of historical storytelling in the classroom. Congratulations, Jackie. <laughs> Dr. Angela Stewart, assistant principal at Deep Run High School, is accompanying Jackie this evening for her honor. I'm not with us this evening, but certainly want to um, have a shout out for Katherine Pike, who is a math teacher from Douglas S. Freeman High School. I wanted to share her award as well. Catherine will receive $14,000 to hike, cycle, and photograph part of the network of trig pillars in varying terrains of Britain. Catherine's goal is to recreate the mathematical surveying process used to conduct the retriangulation of Great Britain, a project carried out between 1935 and 1962 that sought to improve the accuracy of maps. Congratulations to Catherine as well, and congratulations to both our teachers. Thank you for representing Henrico County with excellence in teaching. Congratulations again to our REB award winners. Uh, just fantastic projects they have planned out ahead. Can't wait to hear about their uh, adventures. The next item on our agenda is the Henrico highlight. This month, we are shining the spotlight on the students at Colonial Trail Elementary School who are taking it upon themselves to make uh, new classmates and their families feel a part of the Cub Nation. This effort goes beyond being friendly and supportive. As you will see in this video, it includes student research and resources. And so I'm excited for you to take a look. Tell me in your own words, what does it mean to connect or What's the importance of connecting? We love to do PBLs here in this class. Um, my students are insanely creative. So I presented them with a problem, and their problem was basically based around Colonial Trail being a very transient population. So we have students coming and going throughout the year. And so I asked them what they could come up with that might alleviate some of that stress and create more of a sense of belonging. Mrs. Dobb asked us some questions such as, how would you feel if you were a new student and what would you want to have a sense of belonging? These, this is where our ideas originated from. The ideas just started flowing and it was amazing. We ended up having a big piece of chart paper and we were just writing down all the things and then they came up with the idea of having a kit to give the kids as they arrive at school and so then it just took off. Hi, what's your name? Okay, hello boobies. This is a welcome kit. The welcome kit's main purpose is for the help the student to feel welcome. It doesn't only help the student, it also helps the parents. This is a brochure that helps the parents learn more about the school and find out the holidays that we have. This is some school supplies for the student just in case they don't have many. We talked about things like parameters, like, okay, this needs to be duplicatable. It needs to be sustainable. Um, if this is something that they want to start, then it should be something that could keep going. So obviously cost was an issue. 
So we talked about ways to make sure that it was either free, easily purchased, monetarily wise, or student created. And most of what they did, they made. I also um, like edited with Ria some fun activities, like some crossword puzzles in case they're feeling lonely at recess or lunch. Would you like me to show you to your classroom? We thought that having students as ambassadors will really help the new student feel more comfortable if like another student is welcoming them and it will develop a sense of belonging faster. Welcome. Why is it better for them also? Because they're also having a relationship. They are beyond proud and they think it's really amazing that when they leave here as fifth graders that next year there'll be a new group that will be ambassadors for new students and hopefully that will continue on for a long time. Your class is right, just right around the corner. It is so nice to see our students engaged in meaningful projects such as this. Their efforts are having an immediate impact as the entire school works to create and maintain a caring and supportive community. I would note we have some members of the Colonial Trail team with us. If they would please stand so we can recognize you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as the Colonial Trail team is focused on hellos, we also have a bittersweet goodbye to share this evening. Mike Taylor, the Chief Executive Officer of the Henrico Education Foundation, will be leaving at the end of this month to pursue new opportunities in Tennessee. And to say that Mike has a passion for public education is an understatement. For the last eight years, he has dedicated himself to the students and teachers of Henrico County Public Schools by raising private sector funds to support innovative programs to support learners of all abilities. Mike Taylor is one of the school division's greatest partners. He is a strategic and solutions oriented leader who we are all fortunate to call a friend. And Mike Taylor embodies the heart of Henrico. So you will see He's featured in our Heart of Henrico video this evening. Take a look. I'm with the Henrico Education Foundation. Oh, Good to meet you again. Yeah. We're excited to be part of the annual school supply challenge supply drive. Mike and I go back almost 10 years. I recall that when we were at Fairfield, Mike helped us grow that garden into the farm that it is today. Also here at Tucker, he helped us create a program that involved our English language learners and soccer, combining it with the learning of some academic skills. And that to me shows his commitment to the needs of the schools, his visionary approach, and his heart. It has been part of Challenger Day from helping coordinate uh, volunteers and putting the event together. It's really a great partnership. When I reflect on Mike's leadership as CEO of the Education Foundation, there is no doubt that he has worked to increase connections and partnerships across the region, across the community. And those partnerships and connections have in turn multiplied monetary donations coming into the foundation, which have in so many ways had a tremendous impact and ripple effect across Henrico County Schools. Our students have truly been the beneficiaries of that work. As a nonprofit foundation, we're extending the county's investment in public education. It has been such a joy to work with Mike Taylor. He truly is a, the heart of Henrico. Um, when I think about the work we've done with the community learning centers, even with the Glenlee Telehealth Clinic, he's been right in the center of moving the work forward. Making a difference for kids across Henrico County. And while Mike couldn't be with us this evening, we'll make sure he uh, gets to see that tribute video. And I would note that we are joined uh, this evening by Jay Shively and Robin Rowland from the Henrico Education Foundation, also great partners. If you just stand so we can recognize you and thank you for stepping in uh, to fill into Mike's shoes as they work to find a replacement. Uh, so proud of our partnership uh, with HEF. All right. All right. Thank you, Dr. Turn it over to you, Madam <laughs> Chair. Sorry, I couldn't get That's my okay. mic on. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell. Um, Ms. Ogburn, will you read our mission statement? We'd be glad to. Henrico County Public Schools, an innovative leader in educational excellence, will actively engage our students in diverse educational, social, and civic learning experiences that inspire and empower them to become contributing citizens. Thank you, Ms. Ogburn. 
The next item on our agenda is public forum. This is a time when citizens are invited to address the school board on any matter of concern about the school division. Colleagues, in P2-05-004, um, we may change the time of public forum by a majority vote. Seeing as we only have a handful of citizens signed up this evening, I would like um, to propose that we increase public comment from two minutes per person to three minutes per person. Do I have a motion? I move that we um, increase our time tonight um, from two minutes to three minutes during public forum. Moved by Ms. Ogburn, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Atkins. Um, oh, roll call vote. Um, Reverend Cooper. Aye. Ms. Kinsella. Aye. Ms. Ogburn. Aye. Ms. Atkins. Aye. And I am an aye. Um, public comment this evening will be three minutes per person. Citizens have signed up in advance and will be given three minutes to address the school board. Speakers may be called, uh, will be called to speak in the order in which they signed up and may not relinquish their spot to someone else. We ask you, to each speaker, to come to the microphone and clearly state your name and a school affiliation if applicable. After stating your name, please place the number you were given in the cart near the podium. Speakers must present their remarks to the school board, not the audience, and may provide copies of their comments to the school board clerk. The use of obscenity or defamation is strictly prohibited and will be ruled out of order. To assist you in tracking your time to address the school board, there's a timekeeping system displaying the elapsed time on the screen. Speakers will also receive a notice from the chair when time has expired. The school board is here today for, to hear from you. We will not be responding to speakers' concerns or questions during public forum. However, a Hemrico staff member will follow up with speakers. Stakeholders have the opportunity have also had the opportunity to provide written comments in an online form in advance of the meeting. Those comments are shared with the school board members prior to the meeting and posted in board docs. Equal consideration and attention are given to both written comments and in-person comments. We appreciate your attendance here this evening and for providing the in, your input. Um, if we could have speaker number one, please. Oh, Mr. Pike, since uh, we have moved it, uh, I know we don't change a lot around here, but we did <laughs> to move the podium. The clock, is the clock ticking? No, not yet. <laughs> is this where it goes? Yes, sir. Whoa. Okay. Uh, Ms. Madam Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Cashwell, all school board employees in the Henrico school community. My name is Bill Pike, a retired educator. I'm honored to be here. I'm even more touched that you've allowed me 20 minutes to speak rather than three. <laughs> I've always loved Ray Charles' rendering of the Cindy Walker song, You Don't Know Me. I'm here to advocate for an organization that you might not know anymore, the Henrico Retired School Personnel Association. Founded in 1991, this organization gained traction in ensuring that retirement benefits were in place and available for all school board employees. Additionally, the association is kept apprised of educational issues at the local, state, and federal levels. More importantly, at their spring meeting, the membership announces annual scholarships for students and teachers, and members volunteer in the community in support of our Henrico County Schools. The association is appreciative of the support that our school board has given us over the years. We have benefited from guest speakers, student performances, and a presence at the annual luncheon for retirees. As we move forward into 2023, the association would like to request a time to meet. We are no different than any other nonprofit and that we were punched by the pandemic too. Our association is regrouping for the future, and we would simply like the opportunity to share with you our goals for moving forward. On behalf of the Henrico Retired School Personnel Association, we thank you for all that you do in the name of children. And we hope this holiday season 
these song lyrics from Miller and Harris will ring true for you. May your days be sunny and bright and your hearts happy and light. Thank you for your time. Be safe. Thank you. Is speaker number two present? This is for Kathy Harris. Yeah, you can um, bring it on up. Thank you, Mr. Pike. Good evening. Um, my name is Kristen Cotman. I'm a member of the Holland Springs High School um, PTSA board. Um, I have two sons, one who graduated from Holland Springs in 2020. Um, the other is a sophomore at Holland Springs High School at this time. Um, I'm here today to speak about the program at Holland Springs called the HS2 Promise Academy. This is a grant, a three-year grant awarded by the Virginia Department of Education after school program to provide academic support and enrichment opportunities to students and families. The primary focus is literacy, math, increasing attendance, decreasing discipline, and family engagement. The students go on field trips to different colleges as well as having family engagement activities at the school. This is a great way to connect with the family and the community. This program has given children the opportunity to explore their ambitions and the opportunities in life. Ms. Tamika Threats um, and other student faculty have done a wonderful job with this program. I feel the program should not only be at Holland Springs High School because it's the only high school that has this program, but um, be offered to other high schools as well. Um, this may be the only opportunity that some children would get to open their eyes to where life could take them. And let's continue the program and keep it going and to reach more children in our schools. And thank you for your time. But as a side note, I also want to say that um, with all that's going on in the world and the travest um, travesties that's going on, I do feel like um, we may need um, metal detectors in our schools. Um, I don't want to see any other children hurt, um, any other parents crying. I don't want to see that. So if we could get you know, the metal detectors in the schools, I think it would be best for our kids. And thank you. Thank you so much. Speaker number three, is speaker number three present? Last call for speaker number three. Speaker number four. Good evening. My name is Liz Broda. I'm a history teacher and department chair at Henrico High School. I'm also a proud member of the HEA. And I'm here tonight to share some celebrations and some concerns. Um, first, the celebrations. I'm so proud of how teachers are continuing to adapt and excel this school year. Uh, we and our students have been through a few incredibly tough years, and we continue to support one another, constantly adapting and adjusting to meet the needs of our students. Uh, it's just amazing to see the little and the big accomplishments happening in our schools day after day. Unfortunately, these accomplishments are happening in spite of some things in our environment. And I spent some time this week talking with my colleagues about their current feelings about work. And I wanted to share some of their thoughts with you in their words. Um, first, I'm tired of covering classes during my duty period or having study halls combined. The hourly pay just isn't worth the same as my time. Second, I'm tired of feeling like prescribed county specialist lessons are the only thing I'm allowed to teach. I got into this job to be creative, not to deliver someone else's message. Third, I'm worried about our school's safety. We've lost three former students already this year to gun violence. We need a fence along our street to protect our campus school from it happening here. Fourth, it seems like we are constantly given more to do and less time to do it. Do these people know that I teach for a living with kids in my classroom? That's my real job, not all the other stuff. And fifth, 
I've been teaching for 17 years and this job has only gotten harder and I make only $8,000 more than a brand new teacher. We've made the same complaints year after year, but I'm not seeing real change. So to summarize, um, we're not okay. Uh, serious improvements have to find their way into the everyday lives of teachers. Um, please be transparent with those changes being made and actually ask us for our input in your planning. Uh, the changes in our classrooms require success criteria, and that clarity needs to be present for the county too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Speaker number five. Good evening. Um, I'm so thrilled for the three minutes, yes. Um, but I come today to also talk about the H2 Promise program at Houghton Springs High School. Um, that program has worked wonders for my oldest son who has special needs. Um, he went into high school very apprehensive because of his middle school experience. Um, and he's an honor roll student. Because of the tutoring that he has received through the H2 Promise program, it has definitely um, lifted his confidence. I mean, he's a completely different child. Um, and I'm also here to talk about getting that program at Elko. I've been on my own personal campaign talking with parents at Elko Middle School, um, as well as parents at John Roth and Verina um, to get those programs there. You know, the truth of the matter is our children in the Verona district, they're, they're underserved. You know, compared to Tuckahoe district, uh, Three Chop, uh, and the Brooklyn district, um, you know, our children are underserved. Um, you know, and I've talked with many, many parents in those districts as well. They don't want to see the funds go to their kids because they have everything. You know, I will, I will say that there are kids in those districts that are, that are mingled in that are underserved as well. But as a whole, the Rana district, we are very underserved. Um, and Elko is so remote, just like John Roth and Verina, to where parents have to have a car. You have to have a car to do any type of after school activities, sports, whatever it may be. So to have a program at Holland Springs go to Elko, Verona, and John Roth, where our kids need it the most, would be so beneficial. I've talked to so many parents, so many parents. They want their kids to be involved in after school programs. But guess what? Transportation is an issue. None of those schools are on the bus line. Fairfield is on the bus line. Laburnum Elementary is on the bus line. A lot of schools are on the bus line. Even Freeman is on the bus line. Elko is way out in Sands, and half the people don't even know where Elko is. And I would really love to see that program go there. It would lift the spirits of those children. Those children don't have anything to look forward to when they go home. It's go home, stay in your room, watch TV. They don't have anything to look forward to. And for the ones that can't participate in sports because of grades or other issues, they need to have something to look forward to, to want to continue to go to school and to want to excel and to want to know, hey, I can see myself going to higher education. The, the, the field trips to the colleges are very, very beneficial. I went with my son to Christopher Newport. We had a blast. We had an absolute blast. So please, I'm begging you, please make the decision to have that program go to Elko and then John Roth and then Verina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that concludes our public comment for this evening. Thank you to each um, of our speakers who took time to come out and share their thoughts and feedback. All right, the next item on the agenda is the approval of consent items. Uh, before we um, vote on the consent item, school board colleagues, are there any requests to have an item separated for discussion and or individual action? Yes. Um, Chair Shea, I'd like to have item 9.09, .09, approval of the fiscal year 2023-2024 to fiscal year 2031-32 capital improvement plan considerations. Separate it out, please, for discussion and approval. All right, I hear um, item 9.09. .09. Any other items, colleagues? 
All right, hearing none, let's move to item 9.09 .09, um, for discussion. I'll turn it over to Ms. Kinsella. Okay, so as previously discussed, not only during today's work session, but um, at different periods throughout the year and publicly last month and this afternoon, um, when I look at the CIP, I don't see original holiday, um, which of course originally was an identified project. And then um, in terms of priorities, Johnson was identified ahead of holiday. Um, but now holiday is nowhere on the list. And I realize um, there is not funding um, from current CIP dollars or meals tax money for this, but I would just like for it to be added to the list. And I would like for colleagues to consider um, when we vote for um, the capital plan, the long-term capital plan, um, that they vote um, with holiday, vote for it as amended with holiday added to it. And, and we can add that list to the long range term plan. I also want to get some reassurance and went back and looked back through. Um, Holiday is on our, you know, working document, our master pro uh, potential capital project list. So it is on that, um, along with some of the other things that would obviously get, get replaced in a renovation. So we do have it listed. There is no funding that's identified at this particular point in time, but it is, it is on our list as something that would be a master project list and, and, and able to do down the road, yes. And I just want to make sure, so we're answering Mrs. Kinsella's question. While it's not listed on the CIP draft that's been put before you for yes. your consideration and approval this evening, it is on our master project list. So this CIP reflects what's more imminently planned or what we're looking to fund and plan through those funds in the coming uh, fiscal year, as well as, again, some of those long-term pieces. So if it's um, the board's will, we could amend this list to include it or know that it's on the master project project list and of course every year um, we know that you know the board has decisions to make to adjust the CIP um, you know should we not be able to complete previously planned or even funded projects due to inflation or other uh, considerations so we're certainly nimble enough to do that in uh, next year knowing that that project does still show on our master list or consider amending what you're going to approve this evening well and Dr. Catchwell for a point of clarity uh, the thing, what we are specifically voting on is the CIP for next year, is that correct? Or are we voting on the next 10 years? They're only funded one year at a time, so that's what we're, um, you're approving our plans for that year, and then we would be, of course, seeking the funding, but we do list out sort of that long-range plan, so we could certainly make note on the longer-range plan in case we're not able to accomplish it. I just want to clarify, I mean, yeah. it, I'm just asking for it to be added to the list of future projects for long-range long planning. And not to a, include this project and go on and approve the plan yes. as it's presented for the future year, and right. and we can make note of that. We we can certainly do that. Realizing that yes. there's no identifiable funding source Correct. via meals, current meals tax, you know, cr meals tax, Correct. Um, or otherwise at this point. Absolutely. Yes. So noted. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Kinsella? Um, that is all. Anything else, colleagues? Ms. Kinsella. Um, would you like to take action on that item individually or um, within the consent block? So do you want to, are, are you okay with it being in the consent block or would you like it and to it be, be in the consent block as amended? I would recommend doing it individually, individually. so that you can uh, precisely say exactly what you want. So as okay. is drafted is what I'm hearing, as but is drafted. okay. All right, so why don't we deal with that item first and then go to the rest of the consent block. All right, um, so do I hear a motion on 9.09 .09 at the capital improvement plan considerations? I make a motion that we approve the capital improvement plan as drafted. Moved by Ms. Ogburn, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Reverend Cooper. Uh, roll call vote, Reverend Cooper. Aye. Ms. Ogburn. Aye. Ms. Atkins. Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Um, no. A as presented, but not amended. Correct? The motion was as drafted. As drafted. So as drafted, so, so no. 
um, I am an I, and so the I's have it. The um, CIP has been approved as drafted. We will take the rest of the consent items as a block, hearing um, no other items to be separated, colleagues. All right, um, so do I have a motion um, about the rest of the consent items? Those would be consent items 9.01 through 9.08 and 9.10 through 9.19. Madam Chair, point of correction. So you said 9.01 through 9.08, but then come back and do 9.01 through 9.19? Is that how you want it? It's a basically the whole consent. We're going to do all the consent block except for 9.09. .09. We just did that one. Okay, Madam Chair, I move that the school board accept approval and award items 9.01 through 9.08 and then 9, 9.10 through 9.19 on the consent agenda as presented. Moved by Reverend Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Kinsella. Roll call vote. Reverend Cooper. Aye. Ms. Kinsella. Aye. Ms. Ogburn. Aye. Ms. Atkins. Aye. And I am an aye. The consent block, as adjusted, is approved. <laughs> All right, um, the next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Colleagues, do you have any unfinished business? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is new business. Colleagues, do you have any new business? I have a new business. Okay. Um, since uh, the board's security presentation update um, in October, the board most recently had a board retreat with the Board of Supervisors, and I'd like for the superintendent to please update um, the board here at our school board meeting, if you would, on a recent um, recent items that uh, you and leadership uh, in conjunction with the board and board of supervisors are considering and planning, if you would. Sure, as you noted, um, last Friday we did have an opportunity to present for the board of supervisors as you all participated in their retreat and we were able to provide a recap of the presentation previously shared with the school board related to safety and security updates that are currently underway, the work of our blue ribbon panel um, and shared that with them as well. Uh, and we also noted that, you know, given in, given some of the increased security instances, we've seen that uh, I noted for uh, both boards that I had uh, requested an increase in canine sweeps in our schools and that our emergency management team would be making plans to develop uh, a potential field test of metal detectors in our school. And so, of course, uh, while we're moving forward with a sense of urgency, there's still planning that needs to be done to determine what uh, that field test will entail. And so um, certainly um, heard support from the Board of Supervisors for that endeavor. Um, and we'll look forward to keeping this board, our community, uh, and schools informed as we, as we move forward with the plans for the, that field test. Thank you so much for providing clarity and the update. Anything else? All right, um, the last item on the agenda is the announcement of meeting dates. Our next meeting will be a work session um, scheduled on Thursday, January 12th, 2023 at 1 p.m. The meeting time may be adjusted as needed. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>